Hi guys, welcome to the Athletes and Culture podcast. I'm your host, Hannah McKendy. I'm here with my co-host, John Bull. Yeah, John Bull speaking. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Look, we've got a really good segment today and we've got a special guest. Um, very close friend of mine. So this particular segment, we're going to be talking about the finance and football. Uh, things, you know, kids, especially and parents, should look forward to. Uh, and things they should stay away from when they get a contract and just talking in detail uh, about that. And I've sort of introduced my friend here, Richard. So he's a financial advisor. Uh, we go way back. So we used to play like 10, 10 years old. Yeah, yeah young, like, young. Young, yeah, <laughs> yeah babies. There's, there's babies really. yeah. So Richard's actually got a um, history in football. So he came up sort of in the grassroots, had trials with... Rochdale. Bolton yeah. and stuff. yeah been around a bit but yeah yeah not 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 quite to, to your level but uh I've, I've had a taste of uh, yeah. what, what it could have been like yeah. yeah yeah we've made it up yeah so, so now you're a financial advisor so tell us a little bit about that give us a little summary of what you do what i do okay so a bit about myself so i've spent the majority of my career working in the city of london yeah um i've worked at a firm that was ranked in the top one percent of advisory firms in the uk so i've yeah. learned some of the best practices in industry yeah um, in terms of clients I've worked with, I've probably have advised several hundred clients to date. And these clients typically include partners of law firms, accountants, business owners, even some football agents and uh, charities and farmers, you know, it's across the board. Yeah. Um, so yeah, in terms of the work we do, um, so we do financial planning and investment management. So yeah. with regards to the financial planning side of things, just to briefly explain, what that is, is we look to understand what it is that the client wants to do, yeah. what they want to achieve, you know, how they want to live their life, essentially. Okay. And then with cash flow modeling, we'll put in place a plan and structure to help them live their life and not have to worry about running after money. So yeah. Yeah. that's essentially what we do there. And then we use, obviously, investments to help with that sort of stuff. So, yeah, we run investment portfolios for, for people. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's, yeah, brief, yeah. brief. Awesome. Yeah. Well, let, let's bring it back a little bit. Let's, um, you know, let's paint a picture for you know people listening in. Hmm. For you, football. Um, when you was young, what, what finance? What what sort of financial things do you think about football in terms of opportunity? Like when we were young, we hmm. thought football are million millions of pounds. Yeah. But on top of that, it's like playing for your you know World Cup and stuff. We had dreams. Yeah. But what was your take on football and finance when you were young, like 10, 12? Yeah. Honestly, when I was young, I just wanted to play football because I loved it. I didn't yeah. think about anything yeah. else. I just wanted to play it for the love of the game. I think as you get older, you, you realize there's more responsibilities and then you start to think about the money side of things. Yeah. yeah. But um, um, I guess growing up in a, in, Asian family, we were always encouraged to, to study, really. Yeah. <laughs> so my parents were quite against me playing football because they, they knew the odds of making it slim to none. Yeah. Um, just, just on that, I think I was looking at some stats yesterday. I think less than 1% of people make it as a professional at yeah. any level. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Like how many kids play, but yeah, it's crazy. True. But yeah, I didn't know much in terms of finance. I think I just wanted to play. Yeah. And I'm assuming most kids are probably the same. Yeah. Just want to play, yeah. So yeah. I'd say like me coming from an African background, mm -hmm. I was in a similar kind of position where my parents wanted me to go down the education kind of route. Yeah. Um, at what age did you think you thought, okay, let me focus more on my education rather than football? Mm. Would you say what age? Yeah. You? So uh, interestingly, I made a, a deal with my, my parents. Yeah. So I, so I think I was like what, 12, 13, 14, it was around that age. Yeah. I, sa I said to them, like, look, Give me until 16, because that's when they first that had contracts out at that yeah. age, you know, around there. I said, if I don't make it by 16, yeah. I'll pack it in and focus Maybe. heavily on my, on my career. Yeah. And then, yes, yeah, 16 came. I didn't get a contract. And, uh, yeah, yeah just, it was head down from then on. Amazing. Much. Yeah. The, the fact that you had the foresight when you were 16 to have that agreement with your parents, mm. you know, says a lot about how mature you were back then. Mm. You know, I, th I think a lot of kids at that age, they're very narrow, narrow-minded. Yeah. yeah. And they won't be thinking about stuff like that. No, no. But it's deeper than that, mm. isn't it, Richard? Because, you know, we had a conversation just before we started recording and we talked about, you know, you were just as good as me when I was in the ranks coming up at Man United. It's too kind. Yeah, yeah you, 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 literally, I mean, you, you'll be, you know, you won't say much about yeah. it, but I I think you, you were just as good as me mm. um, to sort of get a trial and go to these academies. But we had a conversation, we talked about, and I've overheard it, 
And when you're young, you, you don't think much of it. But when you grow up, you start to see how wrong it was. Mm. So there was instances where you were told by, you know, managers or coaches, coaches, oh, because you're, you're Asian, you know, you're small, you won't develop, you won't grow. They sort of wrote you out before you even yeah. Yeah. had the chance. You know, tell us a little bit more about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I remember, uh, I think I was at Rochdale. And then literally, like, the first weekend, the manager said to me, you know, yeah, yeah. development-wise, you're kind of behind all these guys. These yeah. guys are much bigger than you. Um, and they also said to me, like, even if you're just as good as them, we still won't choose you. So wow. you, you, you basically have to outperform everyone yeah. by, by some margin to, to get noticed here, pretty much what, what he said to me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, as you can imagine, that's probably disheartening to hear. Um, but, yeah. you know, when you're a kid, you, you, I guess you just deal with it and try and do what you can do. Really. Yeah. So, yeah. At what age was this at when, when this happened? How old is you? 15, I think. 15, 15 14, 15. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Not the most encouraging of words to hear at yeah. that age, but, yeah, it's, it happens, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and for me, I don't, I, don't, I don't think parents as a whole mm -hmm. know this stuff happens. Yeah. Mm. And like you say, kids will probably hear that and, you know, brush it off and they won't think mm -hmm. much of it. But it's a shame, but that's that happens yeah. in grassroots football. Did um did your parents play like let's like say when you'd go to games or to training, would mm. you let's say your mom or your dad go with you? Or mm. and were they actively like involved in your football decisions and stuff, would you say? Or? Yeah, so my mum wasn't my dad was, he was there for me every step of the way. You know, yeah. John probably met him many yeah. times. Yeah. But yeah, he took me to practice and uh, he he was very fair to me. So yeah. he said to me, you know, as I was growing up, he said, you know. Folk, keep education like in the background, like, yeah, still yeah. study, mm -hmm. but yeah. I'll, I'll let you, you know, try and go down this football route if you yeah. can do it. Mm -hmm. And I'll support you where you can. So he, some of the things they've done for me was like, make sure to feed me enough protein, yeah. milk, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get me big because he's, yeah, yeah. he's seen the other guys. So, yeah. and, uh, so he's not a, a big man himself. My dad yeah. was like five, six, five, seven. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, genetics weren't really on my side. Yeah. <laughs> so but he, he tried it, what he could do to yeah. feed me and develop me really. So mm -hmm. yeah, bless him for that. But um, yeah, he, he was there. He was there yeah, to support yeah. him. And uh, so let's say like what you just said about mm. what the manager at Rochdale said to you. Did you have that conversation with your dad as well? And that's where he kind of stepped in and said, look, I can yeah. help out where I can. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So my dad, I think that's, that's what I get it from. When someone says that you can't do something, it yeah. just gives you that extra fire to yeah. like, you know, I'm going to prove you wrong. So yeah, he, was, he was the same. He was like, you know what, mm. let's, let's, let's try and prove him wrong. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Okay. So, you know, let's say Parallel Universe, you, you made it through... You got your first year contract at Rochdale or Bolton. Mm. With your experience now being a financial advisor, what's the first thing you would say? And let's just paint a picture of scholarships yeah. um, so, so people listening can understand. You get your scholarship and it's for two years. Mm -hmm. So you're from 16 to the age of 18, yeah. you play for the team. And then they then decide at 18 years of age or 17, I think it yeah, is, yeah. whether you get a contract. Yeah. Now this contract comes with Right, you sign for the club for one year and this is how much you get paid mm -hmm. a week. Now for our level, at the time academy level, it varies yeah. around the country, but you'll get anywhere from 90 quid a, a, a week, week yeah. mm -hmm. or 150, depending on the club. Mm -hmm. Now, let's give us advice on that. So would, you, would that be something you'd tell the kids to worry about, parents, in terms of getting that amount of money, mm -hmm. being a schoolboy? So knowing what I know now, what I would say is, once they start earning some money, straight away, try and teach them the value of money. Yeah. Uh, make them aware of how short their career actually is. Yeah. You know, most footballers what, retire at 30, early 30s. Yeah. yeah. Some lucky ones make it a bit later. But um, again, yeah, I'll make them aware of some stats. So I'm not sure where you're aware, but I've come across like, I think 40% of footballers yeah. go bankrupt once they retire. Wow, wow. that's like, a high. That's, that's, a that's, high that's ridiculous, moment. isn't it? Yeah. So. Make them aware of that. And I, I get why most people become bankrupt because they think, you know, I'm, I'm always going to be earning this stupid money. Yeah. It's always going to be here forever. And I guess some part of it is due to lack of education, really. Yeah. And maybe being misguided by agents, maybe. Yeah. Because I know they, they play a big part in players' lives. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's say, you know, just taking to what you just said, let's say I've got a pro contract and my money goes up a bit. Mm. Would you advise me to get a financial advisor or would you advise me to stick with my agent who might know how to deal mm. with my finances? What, what What's your advice around that? So for me, straight away, if you can, go straight to an advisor. Yeah. 
if you're early in your career, um, the advice would probably be very simple, but at least they can put you on some sort of track, create a, a plan, like I said. Um, with an agent, so I question agents because I've Googled it and you don't seem to require any qualifications to be an agent. Yeah, anyone can just be one. Yeah, true. And I hear stories where agents like control players' lives, you know, become their financial advisor yeah. with no education or anything, qualifications. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Why would you trust someone that hasn't studied it or anything really? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, speak to a financial advisor and because these people will have a conversation with you and ask you like, about like, like, where do you see yourself in 10 years time? You know, what are you going to do when you retire? Have you thought about that? Yeah. Just make you think really. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, how much do you think you'll be earning? Um, how much do you think you need to, to, to survive? Yeah. And then just put in place a plan to, to cover all that. So it, definitely speak to an advisor if you can. Okay. Yeah. And what kind of, let's say, in terms of investments for early pros, would you advise them to invest in anything? Or would you tell them, let's say, for example, a typical first year contract could be 700 pound a week. Mm -hmm. um, let's say there's a young, 18 year old, mm -hmm. he signed a three year professional contract, his money goes up each year, let's say starting on 700 pound a week. Mm -hmm. Would you encourage him to invest in certain assets or would you say to save all his money or to save a certain amount each month? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So with this, it depends on the client themselves. So we would take them through, through a process. So some of the things we'll do, or the most important question I would ask them is, what is it that you want to achieve you know, financially? Yeah. Um, so for example, he might say, I want to buy a house. Mm -hmm. Then I'll find out, you know, how much is the house going to cost? Yeah. When do you want it? And then we can start putting in place a plan, you know, you need to save this much yeah. um, for this long. Or especially for young guys, I, I would definitely say, put some money away for your retirement. Mm -hmm. You know, for, for typical folks, retirement is like 65, but footballers, it's going to be 30, you know, yeah. it's, it's much sooner than you think. Mm -hmm. So put some money away into a pension. I know pension sounds boring, but think of it as money in retirement to see you after your career. So definitely put in place a plan. And there's a number of investments that you can use to, to help with that. Yeah. Um, an interesting one might be, so for footballers that pay, receive a huge salary, yeah. they're going to pay like half it in tax. Yeah, okay. There are investments out there that you can invest in that saves you 30% in tax. Yeah. So you can write off 30% straight wow. off the top. So that's something you can look to do. Wow. Yeah, save that tax, yeah. use that money for, for something else, you know. Well, so. I'm glad you brought that <laughs> yeah. up. I, I am glad you brought that <laughs> up because I, I wanted to ask a question about um, that particular tax evasion, let's say. But it's not, yeah. It's not. you know, do you guys call it tax evasion or do you call it being smart with your money? Yeah, so, just be smart with your money. <laughs> <laughs> Be smart with your money, okay. We'll pin that one. But yeah. there, there's a lot of stuff these players can do to, you know, invest offshore, invest into companies, mm. maybe not in their region, like in the UK, maybe America and stuff, because yeah. tax rules apply differently. Yeah. Am I right? Am correct, I? yeah, correct, yeah. Yeah. And so would that be a huge advice for you to... Uh, say to players, you know, players with like a social media influence. Like, yeah. let's, let's just say Jesse Lingard, for yeah, example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big social media influences. Mm -hmm. He does his clothes. He's got his own brand. You know, do you see him speaking to his financial advisor and say, right, you've got a lot of money. Let's make some investments online. Mm -hmm. uh, is, that, is that something like you would you'd say to them? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so with me, I look at everything, like their their financial world, really. So we'll look to ways where we can make them more money and save them money, essentially, so, yeah. and protect that money. Um, yeah, with offshore stuff, it does happen. I know there's a lot of stories on it. I advise clients to do offshore stuff too. Yeah. So the benefits with offshore is, for example, you can invest, say, just use a figure, for example, like 100 grand offshore. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you keep that money offshore, there's, mm. there's no tax on, on any gains you make. Yeah. Whereas if you keep it onshore, you could be paying like half of it away. Right. Oh. So if you just put money offshore legally, you can save yourself a bunch of tax. So that's right. why people use it. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Right. That's a, so um, let's talk about fees then, because mm -hmm. I know there are fees tied into this, yeah. getting this mm -hmm. advice is, you know, the listeners here, you're getting this advice for free, free essentially. Yeah. Gems. <laughs> you know, free gems here. So <laughs> do pass it on. But let's talk about fees, because I know agents, 
most players have so much faith in their agents when they get that first contract because mm -hmm. the agents built that relationship and yeah. spoke to their parents. Mm -hmm. um, the smart move, getting a financial advisor. Now, I've heard stories of agents taking around 20%, 25%. What's the difference between, let's say, you, your agent doing your finance stuff and your advisor doing finance stuff and what percentage they take? What, what's the difference? Straight off the bat, it's fee-wise. So, yeah, I've, I've heard agents, or the one I'm speaking to, he takes 40%. Wow. 40%? Four, four zero, yeah, 40%. 40%. Straight off the bat. Like, I heard that and my jaw just dropped. Now, in comparison to our fees, our fees are typically 1%. Wow. Now, that's, that's night and day. Yeah. Uh, if, just imagine you even saving half a percent of your money like for the next 20, 30 years, yeah. that has a big impact on the value mm -hmm. of your portfolio. So if yeah. someone's taking like half of your money, it's, it's, it's like daylight robbery yeah, as far as I'm concerned. 40%. Yeah. 40%. And then think about it. What, what do you get for 40%? Like you, you're not getting any proper financial advice. Yeah. Cause like yeah. I said, there's no qualification or mm -hmm. anything. I have no idea what they know. I think some agents probably just do it agreed really. They just yeah. want to line their pockets. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as you say, many footballers trust the agents. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's yeah. frightening. Yeah. Yeah. So one, I'm 40% of that's, <laughs> that's frightening. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, Cause that's what I was gonna, I was gonna get onto because obviously with let's say high profile footballers, it's not just your playing contract. It comes into sponsorship deals as well. Yeah. It could be media deals as well. Um, mm. Would you advise advise players to, let's say, if they're getting extra money from, let's say, sponsorships and mm. media deals to get that money and save it all and just live mm. off your playing wages? Or like, how would you, mm. what would you advise beyond that? Yeah, so again, it'll be on a case by case basis, but generally speaking, yeah. a player's salary should be more than enough to, to live their life. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> if it's not, I think I think you're, you're doing something wrong there. Yeah, yeah. So with, any money, I think, like, I think most people, especially when you're earning, you know, s s six figures plus a week, yeah. like, you should be able to save at least half of that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think, reasonably speaking. Mm -hmm. um, so, with half of that, definitely put that away into a, yeah. a, a savings investment vehicle. Yeah. And let that generate money for you for your free retirement. Yeah. So, definitely, you know, money doesn't last forever. Your career's not going to last forever. So, yeah. definitely plan, plan ahead. Yeah. Okay, let's let's talk about greed. You know, you you, you mentioned it, and I think um, greed's two part, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You get greed from your parents, mm -hmm. and you get greed from the people from your success. Mm. Agents, forty percent sounds ridiculous to me. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. Um, but I do hear stories, and there's a lot of friends I know who are in the game at the moment where their parents are forcing them to pay them as well. And they're taking a little bit off the players, yeah. mm -hmm. off their off their own child, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. And then they're also paying agents. Mm -hmm. Is greed the fundamental factor of why agents are controlling football in this day and age in terms of players moving abroad, uh, what type of investments to make? Mm -hmm. uh, and does it trickle down to sort of parents where situations where parents are forcing their kids to pay their way, essentially? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I definitely think greed is a big part of it. Now, I'm not going to say all agents are, are greedy. I'm sure there'll be a few good ones there that, that care about the players. Yeah. But I think for the most part, they, they just want to maximise their own profit. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, they'll send the players wherever they need to to do that. Yeah. Um, in terms of the parents, yeah, I've, I've heard stories where they, they they want some some payback, really, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and I think in most part, it's fair enough. You Maybe you support the kid, took them to training, all this stuff. So I think it's it's nothing wrong with giving your parents some money, but I think it goes a bit too far when you're demanding it and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> expecting mm -hmm. it for life or ridiculous, something like that. Yeah. yeah. But definitely greed, I think money has a has a funny thing. It does, a, does funny things to people, yeah. I think. So mm -hmm. if you're not careful, but yeah. I think um, another question um, coming on from where you said about uh, the amount of players that go bankrupt. Um, I want to touch on like professional athletes and the marriages as well, mm. because there's a high percentage of them that get divorced after they stop playing. Yeah. Um, obviously, some kids say that money plays a big part into it. Mm. Um, what advice would you give players in terms of protecting the money and the assets mm. if, let's say, the 
about to go bankrupt or about to get divorced and stuff like that? Is there a way of protecting your assets, let's say, if you're going to get divorced and not yeah. losing half of your money sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. So this is some of the, some of the work I do also, protecting your wealth. Yeah. So especially for like pre-marriage, before you, you can to, to sign on dotted line, yeah. there are things you can put in place to protect your assets. Yeah. Uh, an example is the use of trusts. Yeah. So you can put your money into a trust and essentially that's protected. No one can touch that. Yeah. Um, even in divorce or in bankruptcy, yeah. uh, it's, it's protected. There, there are other investment vehicles that do the same sort of job. Um, but yeah, they're, so definitely that's a, a big thing for football players. They should seek financial advisors to help them uh, put such plans in place. Yeah. Okay. I'll be aware of it in the first place. And so for some players that are already married, yeah. it's not too late still. Mm -hmm. you can still, you can still uh, do some planning around that. Yeah. Um, also, there are things like prenuptial agreements and postnuptial yeah. agreements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you that's, might have that's a big one in our culture. Yeah, 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 you better get that prenup. <laughs> <laughs> you might, yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's some uses of that, but that's not a slam dunk, by yeah. the way. So right. it's, it's not guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. So that if the, the missus has a good lawyer, then there are some ways around it, but yeah. it helps. Mm -hmm. So certainly there are things you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, you remember that? Um, now this is it, this is just something I heard. Uh, you know, the facts of this. I've still got to get round to it. But Abue, Arsenal. Oh yeah. Remember, remember the story, story of Abue? Yeah. Did you hear the story of Abue? What's this? So Abue, not too long ago, a couple of years ago, was found somewhat homeless, broke, right. and uh, the story behind it. I heard at the time. Again, I will have to research the exact facts. But what I heard was his wife left him. Yeah. His wife was Russian. Mm. And um, Abue sort of, she divorced him, took most of his money. Mm -hmm. And his agent actually was acting as his financial his advisor. advisor yeah. mm -hmm. And he, his agent was sort of telling him to invest in, where's Abue from? Is uh, Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast. Yeah. So his agent was telling him, look, put money in a bank over here in Ivory Coast, taking, mm -hmm. all, taking control of all his finances and just creating an illusion that he was his financial advisor. Mm -hmm. So when, he, I think he went to Galatasaray, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. And he, mm -hmm. he started jumping and hopping from clubs mm -hmm. and eventually he lost everything. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, his wife divorced him, mm -hmm. took half, agent yeah, ran off with loads of his money. Yeah. Even crazy enough, as I heard that his agent just ghosted him. Yeah. And wow. all the money that was left in a bank somewhere in Ivory Coast, gone. gone. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because, uh, you know, I think in certain countries, the person who creates the account is the account holder. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that happens. Do you think it's a cultural thing? I don't know. Um, I, haven't, I haven't heard enough cases to, to say really, yeah. uh, not enough experience on that. But I've heard some, yeah, some crazy stories like that. Mm. Um, yeah, to be honest, I, I, yeah, I yeah. don't really know too much on that sort of side yeah. of things. Yeah. I feel like there's certain culture, cultures that treat money and treat finances especially let's let's talk about the game, the sports. They automatically think that, right, my son getting a contract at Man United yeah. one year on 350 a week, mm -hmm. he's made it. You know, mm -hmm. this is the, the money he's come in. Yeah. You know, I used to come home from uh, training. And I was only, what, 12? Mm -hmm. And my mum my and dad would be like, we have made it. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. <laughs> you know, she's, she's on phone calls yeah. for 45 minutes for people yeah. abroad. Just me, that was... And he's an uncles in Nigeria. Yeah. We have made it. Just watch. <laughs> people, people you don't even know. You know, you know. Don't even know. He's a Manchester United player. That was the thing with my dad as well. My dad would be calling up all his mates in Congo and just like, yeah, my son's doing this, doing that. These times, I'm still in the youth team. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, no one's there. It was mad. I've not seen the money. I've not seen a penny. And um, I, I think it's a cultural thing because mm. it, it happens a lot in African cultures. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll get some... Um, some of my friends' English culture, they're very disciplined with their money, but mm -hmm. some, mm -hmm. some are very disciplined with their yeah. money and they teach their sons, daughters, whoever, yeah. from an, from the outset, look, this isn't coming forever. Yeah. So be mindful with your money. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a great book I used to read was, uh, I think his name, Dan Hardy, The Compound Effect. Mm -hmm. Teaching uh, teaching you the basics of compounding yeah. your money. I actually read that week. recently. It's yeah. a really good, good book, really isn't good it? Book, yeah. And I think it's, it definitely is a cultural thing because I think when you come from a background of nothing and you get some money, yeah. um, you know, you, you can sort of get carried away mm -hmm. and make the wrong decisions. Mm. So that's why, you know, having you on the segment today and explaining having a financial advisor as well as an agent mm -hmm. uh, only benefits you in the long run. Yeah. 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 
definitely now I agree with that. Yeah. Is yeah. there um, is there any books that you'd recommend? Let's say for let's say there's a footballer out there watching this, he might not have a financial advisor, or let's say someone could be playing in League Two might not have a lot of money to be able to employ one. Mm. Is there any books that can teach basic financial literacy or and stuff anything like that that you can think of at the top of your head? Top of my head, um, not not really to be honest. Yeah. I'm, no, because a lot of books are quite commercial in terms yeah. of, but they don't really. Yeah, they don't really teach anything. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. probably high level stuff. Yeah, but I think certainly it's just start reading at any books. Yeah, the more you read, the more you'll you'll, you'll learn. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's just being aware yeah. that there's more to learn. Yeah, yeah. Okay, for you, but okay, say if, um sponsorships, mm. what, what what advice would you give for kids like getting sponsored for Nike and Puma, or the illusion agent sometimes mm-hmm. when they get kids. They're like, oh yeah, I can get you a sponsorship yeah, yeah. deal for Puma, <laughs> and it'll cost this much. What what would be your immediate red flags, and what would you say to these kids or these adults who are getting yeah. contracts or mm. parents? Straight away with any contract, read read them. Yeah, read the dot in line. <laughs> you, you'll be surprised how many people just just sign, just sign yeah. the yeah. line. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Like read, see see how much you're getting, who's getting what split, you know, see what age your, your agents are getting. Yeah. Um, and how long it's going to last for. And also sometimes when you, some sponsorship deals like stop you from doing other work as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it can trap you. So just just read read the contract. Yeah. 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 If you don't know how to read it, hire a lawyer, you know, you're a footballer, you should have a bit of money, you know, that. don't worry about saving a few pennies here and there just yeah. for the long term, you know, do things properly, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, what would you say in terms of like, are some like harsh realities that young footballers could face in terms of finances. Um, mm. Let's say there's a player and he's on a, he only gets offered a one year contract, but he's at a big club. Mm. Um, obviously to, to him, to his family, to his friends, that's him making it. Mm. But then let's say after that year, the club doesn't renew it. You know what I mean? And like what, let's say he might've saved a bit Mm-hmm. Uh, from his first year contract. Is there anything that you can advise in terms of him to like, what he can do with his money in terms of maximizing his longevity whilst he's either trying to find a new club or trying mm-hmm. to find a new career path? Yeah. yeah, so many things you can do. Like I said, it comes back to having that financial plan in place again. Yeah. Um, knowing what you need to live on. You know, try not to be too extravagant. You know, like maybe yeah, treat yourself every now and again, yeah. but when you have a clear goal of what you need mm-hmm. to, to survive and to, to last you for the rest of your life, yeah. and you can see that in front of you, it's much easier to do than yeah. you might think. Yeah. Most people don't, don't have a clue really. That's yeah. why they just spend and think mm-hmm. money keep coming in. Yeah. Um, so for a play like that, like I said, try and save like half half your money. Yeah. Like even 20% of it is still a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, put into an investment that grows, you know, five, 10% per annum. I know, you spoke about the compounding effect. Now, 5% growing every year, yeah. year on year for the next, what, 20 years, you've, you've, you've tripled your money, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that could replace your salary in retirement or yeah. if, you, if you don't get a renewal. Yeah, exactly. So certainly think of a plan B, always have a plan B. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like myself, keep educate yourself. Yeah. I read a story on um, Flamini, he used yeah, to play yeah. for Arsenal. Yeah, uh, he invested in some kind of biotech company. Now he's oh, yeah. a, now he's bloody wow. successful. I heard about this. Yeah. He's meant to be like a billionaire. Yeah, he's he? a billionaire. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Seriously, mm-hmm. yeah. Flamini. Flamini. Crazy. Yeah. I think I he's the rich, class of the richest footballer. Richest isn't he? footballer. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, he studied, didn't he? One of his friends went and studied at a university, apparently. Yeah, and mm. they've um, they've uh, basically I don't know if they've invented or they've invested into it, right. but mm. it's like a bio- biochemical mm. energy, like basically like renewable energy. Mm. And it's gonna be like stuff that companies are gonna use in the future. Yeah. So apparently they're worth like 4 billion. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, Blue, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Have it, have your eyes on yeah. some What would you, um, yeah. uh, how can I say, uh, how, what would your advice be on, let's say like, there's obviously like on extra, people buying extravagant, extravagant clothing, like mm. expensive, T-shirts, shoes yeah. and stuff, or people that would say, for example, watches, using watches in a, as an investment like Rolexes and stuff, what would your advice be on that? Mm. So just generally speaking on that sort of stuff, I call it keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah. You see a lot. Like, <laughs> Go into detail <laughs> like that. <laughs> I like that. Like, Go into detail. 
I think it happens a lot in like for athletes. Yeah. When when your teammates, you know, has has a nice car, you think I'm gonna get a better one. You know, yeah. just yeah. that competitive nature. Yeah. And when you do that, you, you're gonna run yourself into the ground. Yeah. Because yeah. there's always gonna be someone richer, someone yeah. has more money. Yeah. yeah. And you're trying to keep up. You're gonna bankrupt yourself essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think the most important question there is, you know, why are you doing it? Why, yeah. why are you trying to keep yeah. up? Mm-hmm. It's usually people that are not, you know, fulfilled in their life, yeah. or they're missing something, so they're trying to. Uh, have some kind of status by using materials. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's a, there's a deeper psychological problem there. Um, but so the other part of your question, what was that? Yeah, you just like about? just uh, unlike let's say for example like Rolexes. Oh, Rolex when some people yeah. say like Rolexes are a good investment, what yeah. would your advice be on on that kind yeah. of stuff? So on those investments, so we call them alternative investments. So number one, buy them if you like them yeah. and you want to wear them, because um, these things. Uh, the, the value only depends on the people. Like, yeah. And it's a smaller market. So it only is worth to people that like Rolex, for example. Yeah. yeah. Um, but generally speaking, Rolex tend to maintain their value. Yeah. But they don't really, you know, shoot up that much as far as I'm aware. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm into my watches. Yeah. Um, Rolex are, are a good piece to have. But most people buy them just because they like them. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, if The thing is, well, that is, if you like it, you wear it. And if you don't sell it, it doesn't really matter because you like yeah. it. You, know, you keep it. Mm-hmm. True. But, yeah, it's not really a money making vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. You know, you, you said it's a, the psychological thing of trying to keep up with people who've got money. Mm. At one point, and you know, I love Manchester, I'm from Manchester, but <laughs> at one point, everyone in Manchester was a footballer. Yeah. And everyone <laughs> had dough yeah. and everyone was rolling in it, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it was just false. It yeah. was just like, mm-hmm. you don't have that much money. Yeah. And um, he, here's one thing I want to, from my experience, share with people, anyone listening who's just starting a career and doing well, Please don't try to keep up with these people. Yeah. Or keep up with it. It's fake. Yeah. It's fake. It's not, it's not gonna do anything for you. Yeah, exactly. And it's easy sitting here not having as much money as you and mm-hmm. you know, I can buy it. But yeah. long term, you've really got to think about, right, what am I trying to prove? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how long am I trying to be in this game for? Mm-hmm. Cause I can tell you now, I tried it yeah, so, when I was mm-hmm. playing mm-hmm. and oh, it backfired really quick for really me. Quick, yeah. Really, really yeah. quick. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know what you you've got some serious oh, stories some, about how it backfired. I've got some for serious you, stories. Well. Like one of my ad- pieces of advice would be like the quicker you get it, you'll lose it even quicker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If that makes sense. Because mm. um, for me, when I was playing, I never really found it difficult in terms of actually playing. It was just when other factors got involved. So what, like I said, with the, in terms of like buying designer clothes and all that kind of stuff, mm. there was a time where I loved a Gucci bag, a Gucci belt, lubes, yeah. I had all that. And then within a year of me stopping playing football, I was having to sell these things, yeah. having to sell belts, having to sell shoes, yeah. because you realize when you're not making that kind of money, which it happens to hundreds of kids up in the country, if not thousands, mm. year in, year out, like it's a big reality check, you know what yeah. I mean? So mm-hmm. whilst you're on your youth team contract or your first year pro contract, these are for me looking back on it now, these are things that you shouldn't even be putting your mind to. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You shouldn't even be thinking about it. Yeah. The only thing you should be thinking about is saving your money and mm-hmm. making sure you get that second professional contract. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. then that's when you can I won't say relax, but you can kind of look in at buying a nice car or yeah. maybe putting a, a, a deposit down for a house. Mm-hmm. But on your youth team contract or on your first year pro contract, yeah. you shouldn't even be thinking about splashing out on any designer clothes or anything yeah. like that because football is a very unpredictable game. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And someone's opinion, you could be flying at a club and then your manager could get sacked, someone new comes in and yeah. they don't fancy you and you're out of the door within six months. Yeah. And yeah. then after that, all it takes is one phone call and then basically no one else is going to take you on, you know what I mean? And it's after over. that, it's mm-hmm. you go from going up and you're shooting right down. So yeah. my advice would be to protect your money in your youth team contracts and your first year pro contracts mm. and then work your socks off to secure yeah, that second contract, second contract because yeah, that's yeah. when you can really say like, okay, cool, I've kind of made it to an extent yeah. you know what mm-hmm. i mean so i think that would be my advice for my yeah. personal experience definitely yeah uh, and we're not saying sort of treat yourself mm-hmm. you know um but treat yourself when you've deserved it yeah it's probably the best way yeah treat mm-hmm. yourself within reason yeah um like i'd say like your first paycheck yeah like go buy yourself 
a nice pair of shoes or, or something. Or like go give it to mumsies. Yeah, go and give it to your mumsies. Yeah, give it to mumsies yeah. or dad. Actually, yeah. I seen um, uh, an interview recently that Zaha done, and he said um, when he made it, his mum, uh, funny enough, my mum did this as well. Like she was mine. It was my first paycheck. Um, it was like ten percent. So when Zaha said it, I was like, oh, it brought back memories because yeah. I remember my mum. I did this with my mum, and it was like the first ten percent for me because yeah. I grew up in a Christian household. Took it and uh, put it forward as, as like a tight sort wow. of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did it with my first paycheck. And I think he said he did it with his paycheck each month. You know what I mean? Wow. Um, yeah. So that was like instilling some discipline into him. Yeah. So obviously if people like him, he's a multimillionaire now, still young and is at the peak of his career. If he'd done that, that's a good path to follow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, and mm-hmm. it, I think if we come full circle from our conversation, uh, talking about greed, talking about parents' responsibility, it's, it's all well and good um, earning that money and splashing cash and stuff. But if you have the basic fundamentals, like you said, mm-hmm. of putting your money in the right places, letting your money work for you, mm-hmm. um, and then you can do stuff like pay your parents, give them a little bit of a fee, mm-hmm. um, stop the greed element from coming into you, getting a mm-hmm. contract, yeah. being disciplined. Yeah. And you know, you open up the doors for you to provide for your family members mm-hmm. and exactly. for you to enjoy yourself. Mm-hmm. So it does come full circle from the conversation we're talking mm-hmm. about. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I certainly agree with that. Discipline is a big thing, yeah. yeah. And um, just like some advice I would probably would would be useful yeah. is to have is um, the lifestyle you had growing up, Yeah. try and you know, keep that lifestyle. Try and maintain so, it. Yeah. yeah. Anything else is a bonus. And, you know, when when you live like that, the amount of money you'll save will be ridiculous. Because you've you've grown up with a lifestyle, you're used to it, so it shouldn't be too painful to do it. Yeah. But if you suddenly get money, you know, you suddenly splashing it, living, you know, 10x, you're gonna when you get a reality check, it's gonna hurt a lot more. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So um certainly yeah, just try and maintain your current lifestyle, I would say. Treat yourself here and there, but yeah, that's something. Well, um, let's say for, because I feel like you're never too young to learn financial literacy. So obviously, I think for you, mm. you learned it quite young. Uh, what are things that you think, let's say, there's parents out there, even if the even if their kids aren't footballers, mm. what are like things that you think, maybe three things that mm. they can teach, let's say, a kid who's 14 years old. Yeah. What are three things in terms of even saving money, making money, or maintaining the money? Mm. What are three things you think that like, parents should teach their kids? Yeah. Okay. And also three things that they should absolutely stay away from mm. as well. Okay. So three things that they should do. I'm just talking from personal experience. So yeah. I grew up from a working class family. You yeah. know, money, money was short in the family. So I, I knew the value of money, you yeah. know. Um, so I think... When you look on the positives, that's very beneficial to have. Yeah, you know, when when you make some money, you know, you know that that's food there, that's you know that's gas bill, that's electric. You know, you know the value of money. So certainly, don't spoil your kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if, if you have parents, um, make them work for what they want. Mm-hmm. You know, because for example, um, that, do housework, do chores around yeah. the house. You know, yeah. get get some pocket money here and there. Mm-hmm. When you spoil your kids, kids just think, you know, money's easy. You know, yeah. It yeah. just comes from nowhere. Yeah. Um, and they'll, they'll take that mentality going forward and it's, it's, it's not good. So, yeah, so don't spoil kids. Um, educate your kids in, you know, so my family, education was a big thing. Yeah. So they all said, go to school and just try and learn, you know, learn how to learn. Yeah. Um, and I think that just opens your mind. Once you start reading things, it, yeah. it opens up your mind a bit more. Yeah. And then you'll you'll start to know. Oh, I need to look at this. I need to look at that. Yeah. You just become more aware. Um, so uh, that's a major key. So yeah. for listeners listening, especially, I'm directing this straight to parents because mm. you have re- you have a lot of control mm-hmm. um, with kids who are in the grassroots and about to get a contract. Major key: don't spoil them. Mm-hmm. Make them work for the money. So when they're coming back from. Yeah. Uh, let's say uh, a tournament or they're coming back from digs where Mm -hmm. they stay, make them still do their chores. Mm -hmm. Let them, just give them a reality check about money. Mm -hmm. Uh, And like you said, just educate them on money as well. Mm -hmm. Make three major keys, I'd definitely Mm -hmm. say to parents. So what's your three absolutes? Don't even do it. Don't do. Um, Okay. Don't, 
I'd say, well, kind of go back to the first bit. So don't spoil your kids. Yeah. Number one. Number two, don't just trust your agent, trust your, your parents even. Mm -hmm. You know, try and learn how to think think for yourself. Yeah. Um, if you don't know how to think, maybe find someone smarter than you yeah. um, just to get their objective opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another thing. You know, don't, don't listen to the crowd, follow the crowd. Uh, and yeah, don't don't keep up with the Joneses. Yeah, yeah that's, that's probably big, another big yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, you've actually said six there. <laughs> <laughs> I just realised. I actually did. What, what else have you done? Okay, well, okay. Give us three, uh, you know, big positives to to do for parents. I think education's one. Yeah, I, I think that's a positive. Mm -hmm. To to be honest, educating your kids. Uh, you said that, and. Um, you also said make them do chores. Do chores, yeah. It's still yeah. some discipline, yeah. yeah. Uh, and what's like your your final positive? Final positive, I guess. Well, being a financial advisor, speak to a financial advisor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a key. Speak to yeah. a financial advisor. So. You know, there you go. The three mm -hmm. do's and don'ts. You got extra don'ts. Yeah. Actually, you got six <laughs> don'ts uh, and yeah. a few do's. But uh, in hindsight, just just closing in on the conversation. Yeah. You know, be smart. And also, you've got so much influence as parents on mm -hmm. your behaviors of your child, the precedent that you set. So educate them and and, and really teach them that finance is one element, but you you have to go further in your career first. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you have to make the right choices financially. But Richard, you know, what a good conversation to get you in. Yeah, and uh, a pleasure because you've actually yeah, been in the grassroots football. Today. Yeah, no, thank you for uh, having me, yeah. Shout, shout yourself out, get your yeah. Instagram, there'll be people looking for financial <laughs> advice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, my name's Richard To. Toe's about T-O. I work for Daintree Wealth Management. Um, yeah, if you need some financial advice or even just a second opinion, yeah. we can have an, an initial free chat, so uh, yeah. Feel free to hit me up. Yeah. So what's your handles, uh, social media? Social media, um, I don't really know to be honest with you. Yeah, we'll link them yeah, in yeah, the description we'll, we'll of the, link somewhere, the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, there you have it. We had a little chat about financial advice. Yeah. Again, get in contact with Athlete Culture, uh, mm. myself, John VJ Ball on Instagram, yeah. Hanok, your Instagram yeah, as well. Yeah, my Instagram is uh, at Hanok McKendy on Instagram and the same on Twitter. Um, we'd love to hear back from fee people, any yeah. feedback or any advice that we can advise you on, we'd be more than happy to do so. Yeah, mm. and plug you into the yeah. right people yeah. as well. Hope this has been helpful. Cheers, thank you. Yeah.